So let's get back to uh, a conversation that you and I had had maybe a little over a week ago. And we can connect this in the show notes as well. So I had uh, heard on the request of a friend, not so much a request, a sharing of a friend of an interview between Sam Harris and uh, Rupert Spira. And for those of you, both of them are pretty well known, but for those of you who don't know, Sam Harris, at least I remember him from five, six years ago. I used to be in his kind of quote unquote camp with Sam Harris and mm -hmm. at one point with Richard Dawkins and the like who were atheists. I'm sure he has come to transform himself as well, like all of us. And uh, part of his openness was because of his own interest in meditative and contemplative practices as far as I know. And I think that he has also has had his own touch with uh, psychedelic experiences as well. Mm -hmm. And the other interview quickly was Rupert Spira, who is a spiritual teacher and student of actually one of my spiritual teachers, Francis Lucille, that I've studied with, um, have been very fortunate to study with. And so they had this discussion to kind of sum it up. They had a very good conversation, but one of the point of difference between the two is that Rupert and I think that includes both of us as well from our conversation, is that there is a deeper reality and that that reality is real. And that what Rupert was saying was that our very own ordinary awareness is very much at the foundation. And as we explore this, that awareness is at the foundation of reality. As a matter of fact, it's primary. Yeah, it's primary. Or to say that reality, what is real, is our awareness. And yep. everything is appearing in it and not the other way around. Which in a lot of science, I think where Sam was not agreeing with that fully. And he said that maybe that's a possibility. We don't know. But he was also on the camp that it could be possible that, uh, and I might be wrong because I heard this 10 days ago, that, that matter itself, whatever that is, that something outside of our awareness can actually be primary. And that it builds it, you know, it's like these molecules that come together and H2O comes and makes water. So there is like a equivalent of H2O that creates our awareness or my experience of existence. And Rupert's comeback to that was, I think, was that how do you know that? Because, you know, as I was saying, was all of our instruments, all of our technology is within our awareness. I am the one who sees that. So how... Why should I assume the existence of something that I can never verify? Yes. Yeah, no. I mean, to speak to this, the first thing that comes to mind is something I believe Alan Watts said is that atheism is a form of piousness. And it is, uh, to, to be preaching atheistic ideas is spiritual an idea as anything, really. Yeah, I, I just want to say I heard someone say that recently that I think it was Igor Kufayev, a spiritual teacher, and he said that atheism is probably the most intimate relationship with God. It's full-on denial of your own self. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very intense. Right. No, I, I get it, and I, I see it that way. I see the piousness in atheism. I mean, yeah, I, when the mystery runs so deep, the question I had for you, Alex, was, and, and maybe you're going into this, is you had an experience of ND. When Sam Harris was talking to Rupert Spira, he gave the example of anesthesia. And he said that people who were given anesthesia, because he himself is a, a neurobiologist or neurotherapist, something maybe neuroscientist, that people have kind of like this blackout. <laughs> they don't uh, have any recollection of what happened during that time. Right. And so I really wanted to spend a little bit of time here to connect with that because that's a theme that's very important to me. I think that yeah. we must don't think about that. Just to kind of have this clarity that I would say it's not just anesthesia. I would say deep sleep, distraction, somebody knocking you with a two by four on your head and anesthesia and near-death experience. All these are actually the same experience. So it's not that you have to take anesthesia or have to have an intense experience of an NDE. Right. Yeah, and to different intensities and different degrees, yes. During my near-death experience, I had no sense of time whatsoever, and there was no measurable brain activity whatsoever. They actually thought I might be a vegetable for the rest of my life if I were to survive. And it was quite shocking that everything 
came back to normal immediately afterwards. But yeah, I did lose sense of time. And there is a spottiness and memory of events coming out of it, but there was a lucidity in the experience beyond, you know, like, strangely enough, it was confirmed that I had no brain activity, yet I had an experience. And that was in 2011. I actually, Sam Harris came to UCSD in, I believe it was 2010, maybe in 2009, but he came he there. The University of California, San Diego, just for yes. Yes, yes, <laughs> UC San Diego. And I I heard him speak and I got introduced to him at that time. I had friends that really liked him and he had progressive ideas. They were really smart. He'd written books. He was very already very popular and well-published. And I actually found his work to be a little confusing because I listened and listened and listened and and, and he had all these interesting things to talk about. He'd talk about retreats and he would talk about a little bit of like psychedelic stuff, not really revealing too much of his own personal experiences, but enough that you could tell that he's been immersed in it. And um, he would really touch upon ideas, but I kind of felt that I was listening with an open heart. And every time I got invested in what he had to share, I had the rug pulled out from underneath me because... It was an incomplete idea or it stopped with an idea that he could sell books on, or I don't know. I, I, I can't say what his motivations are exactly, or maybe it's the prestige of his position or his status and culture or whatever it is. I, I'm not here to judge him. And I don't mean to offend all my friends that really love his work. There's, I know so many people that like, they're like, oh, do you know Sam Harris? And they like, want to give me his book or... And I've listened to all his, a lot of podcasts, his early podcasts when he, he was on other podcasts and yeah, really interesting guy with a lot to share, but in my feeling, he, he kind of misses key points where he doesn't fully embrace the mystery and instead he's embracing the piousness of atheism, but under the cloak of spiritual idealism, it's a kind of an interesting mix. It's a, a you one of the more unique mixes out there. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, I find it interesting. I think he's very articulate and that kind of even camouflages it further. So you have also been in cognitive science and we have thought about this and we've experimented. And so maybe you can actually, actually say something. And then I can say something is why do you, Alex, think that in all these states, which we have first tried to clarify that it's not just the anesthesia and NDE, it is distraction and deep sleep as well. So why, why do you think that awareness is there? Why is the awareness there? I don't know. I mean, wh why is it that when we listen to someone speak that we know and understand and care about that we, without even words, we can tell something's wrong or we can tell how they're feeling precisely or you know, like some things here, there's just a, a rich subtlety of detail that's unspoken. And I, I believe that's where it all begins. And, and I think uh, it's easy to deny subtlety when you're very strong intellectually and your whole world is founded on science and data. And it's very easy to ignore subtlety. And, but why does, why do we have awareness in the first place? No, 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 sorry, not that why do we have awareness in the first place. I was just saying that you and I have seemed to take in a position that awareness is there when we go to sleep, when we take anesthesia mm -hmm. or where you choose, or you're distracted. You have taken clearly taken a position which is different than Sam Harris, more along the lines of Rupert Spira. And so I just wanted to kind of go for each of us why that is the case. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's been the rich subtlety and the connections and the richness in listening to your heart and following the openness, following the signs and the feeling, the feeling, um, and discovering that it's rewarding and it has a lot to offer. And if you listen, it speaks and denying that in my experience has led to hardship and difficulty and all kinds of things going wrong. It's kind of just been through my own personal folly that I've really attuned to the subtlety and listened to the 
inner voice within and have been guided by something other than my thoughts. And to me, that my personal experience is that's what ultimately informs me. It's not the ideas that other people have given me or the things I've read or videos I've seen, or it's my experience. And, and to me, it's, it's hard to explain. It's, it's, I can't, I just can't deny my own experience. I mean, I, I just, even if it disagrees with other people, I came to that dead end in the past and I had to come face to face with all of it. And yeah, for that, I'm grateful because I, I feel like it's opened up door, unthinkable doors, impossible doors have opened since that point. Not that I wish the experience on anybody else. It, uh, it was a very hard one, but yeah. No, this is very beautiful. And I think, as you said, there is subtlety and that we communicate a lot of things. And uh, you saw something and you did actually see it. And that was verified within you. And you do not, uh, it seems wrong to dismiss it. Yes. So to say that consciousness or awareness is not primary, it would be to dismiss what you were shown. Right. And it would be completely nihilistic. I mean, it's hard to imagine what is this life about? Is it just like to believe nothing matters and um, drink yourself into a stupor every night? And I don't know, care, don't care about your health or what matters if, if your experience isn't primary? I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it's, it's just completely disempowering. Right.